I'm down in Florida probably two, three times a year. So we will definitely meet next time I'm in Florida. Yeah, yeah that's awesome, man. I'm definitely going to be planning another trip up to New York as well. That's awesome. That's a, I like your story. I didn't go super into my story, but that's how I started. And honestly, I don't know if you had any of your machines uh, sit or anyone who's watching this video and maybe it's in the vending business or isn't. But I remember, I think I only played six of them and it took me maybe a month or two. It might've even took me two months, let's say. And then the other six, they sat probably for the next year. And I didn't get serious until that following year when I realized like I should scale this. I think my six machines, it was making me, it had to be making me like 300 bucks, maybe, maybe a little less. I don't remember exactly, but they were making me decent money. And then I was like, you know, I could scale this. I have another six. So then I hired a locating service and then did it that way, did it that way. But now we're here, right? Now we're Let me here. Let ask you a question, because I know a lot of people want to know, how mm -hmm. much did you, first, how did you find the locating service? Okay. And then how much, how much did they charge you per machine or per location? Yeah. So, um, I'm not going to shout them out. I don't, I don't like how our last business deal went. So I'm not going to say their name or anything like that, okay. but the locating service, um, it was like 50 bucks. I believe at the time it might've been, I think it was a little cheaper at the time. It might've been 39 bucks, but they raised their price and I just found them, um, actually through a book. At the time, it was a book that I bought on Amazon, how to start a vending business. I read this book and he actually had a link to this guy and that's how I found them. And then that's awesome, how I man. did. You actually have um, a book, something like that about starting a vending business, don't you? It's not, it's not out yet. It should be out in the next two weeks. Uh, but yes, I will have a vending book out. Um, maybe the next time we do a video like this, I'll have a link. Um, I should actually have a link maybe when we uh, have this okay, uploaded, at least for people. Just for the viewers who, who are interested, how much is that book selling for? And where can they find it when it comes out? I'm not sure how much I'm going to sell it for. I'm also looking to try to give it away to people. Um, okay. So we'll see. I will let you know over the next two weeks. I really don't have prices right now. So I do apologize. Okay. Where will they be able to find this book? You already have a place. Is it going to be on Amazon? Amazon Kindle? Yeah, Amazon, Amazon Kindle. Yeah. And it'll also be in hardcover. You could get a uh, paperback book as well. Okay, so we'll definitely have that link in the description, you know, when we do the, when, once it comes out and we do the next podcast. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but super excited for that. And that'll help I a lot. I want a copy. I'm going to be your first uh, customer. I'll give you a copy. I'll give you a copy, Mike. I'll, sh I'll, ship, I'll ship you a hard copy. I'll sign it. I'll sign it. <laughs> definitely, man. <laughs> I need another book to add to my collection. <laughs> I read so much, man. You have no idea. I'm the same way, man. I'm the same way. You got to read, man. You have to read. Absolutely. Absolutely. So that's awesome. Good to know your story. I mean, we haven't really talked much, but that's awesome. I think my biggest question for you, and I think it could be a good question. I, I don't know if you know a lot about it, but I've been looking into the arcade machines. I'm actually, I'm, I have the chance to build out an arcade um, inside a sports arena. They want 16 machines. I've been looking more into it. Do you believe that the arcade industry has died because of this thing right here? I don't think so. I think it all depends on your location and where you put it. Okay, fair. And I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you why. Okay. Because there's a place over here where I live, close to the mall. It's not even in the mall parking lot. Is the, the plaza right but, next door? Mm -hmm. It's a place called Stevie B's Pizza, and they have a big pizza place and all right star note. okay another star note oh really that's awesome let me hold this up here wow where in, was it in your machine or you just got one yeah that's yeah. awesome yeah Giorgio found it in the machine so <clears throat> he brings them through but um that's awesome anyway I um I go through I go through all type of places, always looking for vending machines. Being how you know I'm always looking at like competitors and people I can learn from and how they have things set up and just for different ideas in general. Because I always want to continue to grow as an individual and grow as a businessman. That's the best way I think. So um, I go into Stevie B's and they have an entire arcade in the back of the pizza place, and that place is jumping on the weekends, especially during the week. People play as well. I've gone through there during the week. I go through there different days just to check out and see like how it does. Cause I've always, I wanted to create my own arcade myself. Yeah. But it's, I, I got a buddy who actually has a pizza place. He's got a pizza joint and we've been talking about conjoining our businesses, 
You know, he's got a he's got a uh, his place is all right, but it's not big enough to 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 hold an arcade. Yeah. So you know, we're thinking about possibly in the future going into business together. Yeah, that sounds cool. But definitely, I, I definitely want to get an arcade up. I put my machine just in other people's businesses right now. All my machines, they're always just hosted by other businesses. But um, I think it'd be cool to have my own little place of assortment of machines as well. Um, Absolutely. But I go into Stevie B's, like I say, not to get off the topic. I go into Stevie B's on the weekends especially, and they have all type of machines in there. They have the skee-ball machines, the basketball machines. They have like car race and motorcycle machines, shooting machines, um, claw machines. A lot of the claw machines have tickets though. Instead of stuffed animals, they have like tickets. And okay. then they have like a little counter, like a little kiosk right there with all the type of stuff you can get with the tickets. And that's what attracts the kids. And I don't believe that you can pay with money. You have to pay with the tokens there. Okay, cool. So you're, so you're I, exchanging. I kind of like that as well. I love that. I love that more. When, when, when you when you get when you pay money a kid a, a parent to give the kids money and they go and play and when it's time to go it's time to go it doesn't matter when you got the money but if you buy like fifty dollars worth of tokens or a hundred dollars worth of tokens and they're non refundable yep whether they leave or not they you've already made your money absolutely so I like and they're the gonna come idea. I like the ticket idea because now they're playing the claw machine to try to pick up fifty stacks of tickets. 100 stacks of tickets, 500 stacks of tickets, you know, so they can go up there and buy the little things. And I see a lot of the parents actually playing those machines because they're trying to win the tickets for the kids. But I mean, it's That's a cool awesome. little hangout spot for families on the weekends, especially. And um, I see it doing really, really well there. So yeah. I know that there is a lot of potential. I guess it's all just how you set it up and your, you know, the way that your ability is to do business and market. You know what? I think you're absolutely right. But that answers the question so, so well, because a lot of people that I've been talking to up in New York, um, I think they're just lazy because they honestly are telling me what you could be. I think, I think it's a 50, 50, you know, you don't, you don't really know if it's dying or not dying, but they're up here. They're saying, Oh, it died. It died. But the thing is they're saying the arcade Why business, it, die? it died because they have, 25 cranes sitting in a warehouse and they're not placing them because they're lazy. That's why it died in their head. That's it the didn't... question. Exactly. You always got to ask why. If somebody tells you you can't do something, it, the first question is, why is this person telling me that I can't do something? Is it because they can't do it themselves? Yeah. And then the first thing they want to do is throw it off on me? Like, it's true. It's so true. You do have to look at that. And I like that a lot. We spoke about that. You, you're, I like your mindset shifts on things like that. I like that. Yeah, I don't, I mean, I, not true enough, I'll listen to people if they have a valid argument or something that just doesn't make sense. Of course. But, you know, the first thing people want to do is tell you, you can't do something. Look at the Wright brothers when they, when they sustained flight. You know, think about how many people told them they were crazy. Because I guess the longest one, I think the longest um, record at the time was just gliding experiments. And I think the longest one was like 13 seconds at the time. And then that guy ended up dying. But um, like, I think laugh, about what people true. thought about them. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, they were bicycle manufacturers. But the, I mean, they weren't hearing it. You know, sometimes you, just, you have to uh, like block out the naysayers. People are going to tell you what you can and what you can't do. But if you really believe that you can do it, I mean, it's even, it's even better. If nobody else can do it and you can pull it off, you're going to be more successful at it. You're going to be the go-to guy. Be a can in a world full of cans. You know, people love to see people succeed. They want to go to the can guy or the can woman. To, yeah. How is this person doing it? They want a recipe for success. People look at our channels because they want to see us succeed to know that they can do it. Yeah, absolutely. You know, the people that are starting out, you know, obviously there are people who are probably way better at this than I am. Who Same with me. Way longer. Of but course. the ones that are starting out are the ones who maybe not are at the level that I'm at or you're at. They'll watch us to see some of the things, or even some of the ones who've been doing it better than us, maybe or longer than us. Maybe they'll still look for our channel for inspiration, or or maybe we can give them a tip that they don't know. Everybody has something to offer. I think it was Warren Buffett said, I, and he he said I can learn from anybody, even if it's what not to do, and that's that's so true. Like you can even learn what not to do. I know one thing: I might not know what to do, but I'm not going to do it the way this guy's doing it. 
Absolutely. There you go. A little, little motivation for Mike G. I think I'm going to take that piece and I'm going to edit it and repost it. Little Mike G motivation. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, man. Definitely, man. I, I always try to motivate people, man. I try to motivate myself. We have to every single day. We're entrepreneurs, you know. We have to we have to write our own check, you know. So we have to be motivated every single day. I know if I don't believe in myself, man, then like I'm already I'm I've already lost. So I have to I have to consistently and constantly motivate myself. Yeah, hundred percent. Motivating myself, sometimes I can be uh, an example or a motivation to others. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. That's awesome. Hard, well, but sometimes you're your worst enemy. You, you are. Know? I think you are. It's that, it's that inner conversation that you have going on all the time. Because life is nothing but a bunch of little decisions. A bunch of little decisions that we make. Every second of the day, we're making micro decisions. Am I going to go left? Am I going to go right? Am I going to go straight? Am I going to buy this? Am I not going to buy this? Am I going to go to work today? Am I going to do this? Like, Am I going to stop at this gas station or that gas station? Or whatever your decisions are, <laughs> your life is a, a multitude of decisions. And sometimes that inner conversation that's telling you do it, and then the one that's telling you not to do it, sometimes you'll come up with all the greatest ideas in the world. And then your own self will talk you out of it. No, you could never do that. I remember listening to Les Brown talk, motivational speaker. He said, sometimes you just got to look at that voice and tell him, shut up. <laughs> you know? And then True. just and keep going. I love, honestly, I... I, I thought this would be all vending, but I feel like we could just talk about any of this stuff, even entrepreneur related. That's more so my channel because it's more broad, but I think that's an amazing point to make with the decisions. And I was just reading a Tony Robbins book, uh, Awaken the Giant Within, and life is seriously all decisions. Every single, we, every single decision we make from the moment we wake up, that first thought in our head affects the entirety of our day. And we have to realize every single moment that we're putting a thought in our head, whether it's negative or positive, is affecting the direction of the future of your life. And I think that is a huge yeah. point that people don't realize. I like that you say that too, because uh, it, is, it is stated that the, the, whatever you listen to or whatever you, you, you're, whatever you imbibe or take in, that first 20 minutes when you wake up early in the day, that can dictate how your day goes. So it is actually good to listen to something motivational early yeah. in the morning. Yeah. You know, you don't want to hear, sometimes you go and listen to the news early in the morning to see what's going on. A lot of time that can drastically impact your day. You go and look at something very negative on the news, that can impact your day. I'm not telling you don't watch the news if that's what you like to do, but you know, watch something or listen to something that is, is positive early in the morning. A lot of time when I, when I turn my phone on in the morning, I turn my YouTube on, before I listen to any messages or anything, what I'll do is I'll turn on some motivational speakers and then just, just get amped up for the day because I know I got goals. I got things that I want to achieve. And yeah, I write absolutely. Right now, what do I need to do today? What do I need to get accomplished? Absolutely. And I always try, I don't write just enough things that I can get done. I always write way more things than I can ever do. You know, because I never want to finish all my goals in one day. I always want to have something left over for tomorrow. I can do about 10 of them. I'm going to write 20 of them down. Now, what are the most important out of these 20 that I, I need to get done first? You know, and then I kind of like go that way. I need to go out and I need to at least ask for, I need to go ask 20 places today. Absolutely. You know? And I need to do that maybe at least once a week. I need to go around and I need to go to 20 businesses and just make connections, make networking, see if I can get some machines in there. If not, leave on my card. If anything changes here, give me a call. Do you have any recommendations of anybody else? Like you're going to get no's. It's going to happen. So I, I hear people, people ask me a ratio. I've heard people give ratios. I think it all depends on your uh, people skills. Some people's ratio will be higher or lower one way or the other. But um, I know that the more I go in and speak with people, the more things I try, the more things I realize what kind of work and what kind of don't. And I just kind of play to the person I'm talking to. You know, how can I create value for this business with my machine? Some people create that value by offering commissions. When I place small bulk candy machines, I don't offer commissions. So I have to create value in another area. Now, if it comes to a full line machine or something that draws electricity, then yeah, I'd be more persuaded to uh, consider 
offering a commission because then it makes more sense. Absolutely. But definitely not with a, with a bulk candy machine because then it's like I'm working for free. Yeah, absolutely. All right, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the video. Just a reminder, there are four parts to this series. It was an hour long, so there are four 15-minute parts because I broke them up so that it'd be easier to watch. So y'all make sure you go check out part one, three, and four. And if you like the video, make sure you leave us a thumbs up. And also leave me a comment down below. If you're interested in starting your own vending business, what type of machine would you start with? And if you already have a vending business, what type of machine did you start with? Also, if I can get everybody who watches this video to share it with at least one other person, there's no telling who we might be able to reach and motivate. And if you like the information that I share here, consider hitting that subscribe button. That way you can get instant notifications every time I upload new videos. Until then, I'll see you next time.